In the previous tutorial, we took a look at scaling your object using the bones. Like for instance, I right click here in pose mode, I press S and I'm scaling the bone and it scales the shape of my object. Okay, And you can do it along any local axis that you want or exclude any local axis. And that works whether you're in, notice I'm up here in armature mode for the object data and I have this octahedron shape. Well, I could also use a stick shape. Maybe I just prefer that shape and I press S, it works the same way. Or if I'm in B-bone shape, press S, works the same way, like that. Or I press G, and I can move it around. So they're just different ways to look at bones. I happen to like looking at the octahedron bone, like this. But now there's another way to display it, and that's through the envelope. Now when we normally parent things, when I've worked in the previous lessons, which were introductory lessons, I normally take the object and I parent it to the armature, and I use automatic weights. All right. So weighting is, and you notice what happens when I change it. I also have this little elliptical shape in here like this and that's uh, basically the weight that the bone has influence wise on the object. So let's go back from here let's go into edit mode because I'm going to work with this in edit mode instead. So now in here I can still change the shape of the bone in here. If I press S I can change the shape of the bone but it doesn't change it's not changing the influence of it's not changing uh, the mesh when I'm doing it in here I'm in edit mode that only works in uh, in pose mode but notice if I'm going to press S again and it's changing the shape of the bone but it, notice the influence all the way around here is also changing in 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 size all right so in some cases you want to change the shape of the bone and in some cases you want to change the influence like that. Now in also in here I can also select the individual bone ends like that and I can press S here and I can scale that and you can see the adjacent bones that are attached are also scaling and also that influence is changing as well. So that's one one way to change it. So you there you're changing the scaling of the bone and you're changing the influence of the bone on the shape. Now the other way to do it is you also press Control Alt S instead of just S. So Control Alt and S, and then when I move it, did I get it? Control Alt S. Maybe I didn't get in there. All right, let's get this bone. Control Alt S. All right, there we go. So I have the whole bone, and then when I move it, I'm changing the influence only, like this. All right. So what I like to do is try and match my influence to the object that I'm working with. So I, I would come up here like this and drop this down and press S and I would shrink this bone down to more accurately match the shape of my object. Maybe like that even. It just depends on how you want. It. A lot of this comes down to uh, how you want your object to bend, how many creases you have. Like for instance, in if I was in object mode and I had this object if I well let's I'll show you here let's get out of here this I'll go back into object mode just for a second and we'll pick this object here and I'll go into edit mode and notice this is a really this is a bad object this is a bad example for this particular one this was because we were doing the other example with the uh, with this damped track constraint that I just had scaled this object. So this is really a poor example for doing that, but maybe I had a cylinder to start with and I had used my button up here. Where is it? Loop cut and slide button control R and I had made a bunch of loops along the way. Well, you can make a bunch of tight loops in a close location say like where a knee is and then it, you would have more control over the way that bent and it would have more control over the way your mesh moved as well so they all come into play but we're not going to do that in this lesson because obviously that's a terrible object for trying to do something like that but we'll do that in the more intermediate tutorials there will be a lot of tutorials on armatures and bones because it's a fairly advanced subject all right all right, well, that ought to get you started. Just kind of play around with that. Every little bit helps. Just take it a bit at a time because there's a boatload to learn. And uh, I'll see you in the next lesson.